All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Today is Wednesday, September the 1st, 2021, and oh boy, do we have a lot in the news today from all over the world, so let's jump right into it. Also, I just want to say thank you to everybody that showed up for last night's live stream. It was a blast. I promise you we will be doing more live streams like that, more fun, interactive, engaging live streams, which is what makes everything so great about it. So anyways, first off... um cashless banks, a terrible economy and unpaid salaries and mass hunger may soon engulf Afghanistan as it seems the Taliban has to now deal with all of this, right? So the question becomes, will the Taliban start striking deals with certain countries like Turkey um, and, you know, the Saudi Arabia and things like this in order to sort of, whether on a public level or on a secretive level, in order to sort of keep that movement going in case there's ever some type of insurgence or proposal of an incursion from the West again or from a, a foreign, I guess you could say, uh, adversary in the, in the eyes of the Taliban. Again, Joe Biden said in a speech yesterday, which we'll be covering shortly as well, that the he said something along the lines of don't quote me exactly but the time the era of the u.s uh f invading other countries is over something like this yeah the u.s but what if there's a proxy country for example you know they use a european country but you know a nato ally to justify going into a region for another reason but it's really for the u.s's re uh, uh interests mainly right it's it's a it's a tricky uh tit for tat sort of thing i can guarantee you at least in my humble opinion the cia is not leaving afghanistan whatsoever so the next thing is that japan has found black particles in moderna's vaccine again this comes shortly after the 1.3 or 1.6 million dose the doses they had to toss out but believe it or not folks this is fact according to bbc and routers so i just want to make that very clear so youtube doesn't take this down but um a Japan a doctor found black particles in Moderna's vaccine after injecting, give or take, 3,700 people, almost 4,000 people. Again, I say this very carefully, but when people say to me or family or friends say about the vaccine, Dave, how come you haven't taken it yet? Why don't you trust the government or these agencies that are working on it, these companies? First off, let me tell you, it's public knowledge that DARPA is working with Pfizer, Moderna, Bio AstraZeneca, and they've all had private classified contracts with DARPA and the CIA and the Pentagon for years. So it's not like, you know, thinking or imagining bioweapons or conceiving of them making it is not anything new per se, right? With that being said, my response to family and friends is the reason why I haven't gotten it is because I fear they know exactly what they're doing. Meaning, they're, you know, the potential to deceive. I got, I got to be very careful here, right? Or exploit, if you will. But anyways, the next thing is that, just a quick little fun thing, Will Smith has announced a fresh Prince of Bel-Air reboot that he's going to be on. So, it'll be cool to see. I wonder what it'll... Knowing, you know, nowadays it might be some Crave or HBO or Netflix type of thing, maybe a mini series of sorts. Not sure if he wants to come back for multiple seasons or just do sort of a, you know, 10, 20 episode one time thing and that's it, right? Um, the next thing is that Meghan McCain said this um, on Twitter this morning, and I, you, you guys know normally I don't report these things, but this all connects back to Biden's Afghanistan speech, which I have a problem with as well. So let's take a look. And I promise there will be way more than just Afghanistan we'll be covering. Meghan McCain tweeted, This is extremely difficult for me to say. I once thought I truly knew Joe Biden and he helped me through pain and grief, for which I am grateful. This man on TV giving this speech, I do not recognize this man. God help our country. God help the Americans we have abandoned. End quote. This is from Meghan McCain. There are hundreds of Americans still left and stranded in Afghanistan. This is true. Yes. Um, again, they haven't, the, the White House hasn't lied per se. They've obfuscated if you will. And so President Joe Biden, listen to this, by the way, uh, wanted the now departed Afghan president to create the perception that his government was capable of holding off the Taliban, an indication that Biden knew it was only a matter of time before the U.S. ally fell to the Islamic group, even while reassuring Americans at home that it would not happen. He blatantly lied to the American people. And by the way, how come no one's fact checking that? Why hasn't Biden's account, why haven't his accounts been removed off social media? It, it's a fair point. He blatantly lied. But I can give you one instance when Biden said a month ago, under no, and I quote, under no circumstances will you see our servicemen, our soldiers and all that being, you know, lifted off the air, uh, the, the, the roof of the airport. Yeah, <laughs> I got a video showing quite the uh, quite the opposite of what Biden said. Um, anyways, uh, in the last phone call between Biden and his Afghan uh, then counterpart, uh, Ashraf Ghani, Biden said they needed to change perceptions of the Taliban's rapid advance, 
quote, whether it is true or not, end quote, according to transcripts and excerpts published on Tuesday. You see, you see, guys, no, nothing's nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. And I'm not trying to sound miserable, but I mean, holy cow. Is this not what we talk about publicly and in, in, in the member section, too? It's just blatant lies. It's blatant lies. Anyways, the next thing is that the Washington Post, and I'm skeptical of this, but uh, has because of their ties with the CIA, uh, the Washington Post reported that Representative uh, Mark Wayne Mullen has gone rogue to travel to Taliban-controlled Afghanistan on a rescue mission in the face of multiple warnings not to do so from the Pentagon and State Department, and nobody knows where he is right now. He took the, he took the risk. I mean, respectfully, if he wanted to go, he made it vocal, he wanted to go, he went. Simple. He took the risk. He knew the consequences. I know I'm not saying we should just let him, you know, do his own thing. But again, it's not like oh, he, he suddenly disappeared or he was kidnapped. We, we knew his intentions. So um, the next thing is that a pharmacist, uh, excuse me, saw several black particles in the vial of the vaccine. This was the Japan thing. Sorry. Um, now, the next thing is that Lebanon is enjoying lots of solar boom times, as they call it, since their fossil fuels have run dry. Uh, some of them, uh, some homes have been limited and people have been limited to, I believe, one to two hours a day worth of uh, power and electricity. And they're using solar powers to combat it now, right? And again, this is something that will not really be covered by the mainstream media too much, if you ask me, because the science shows, you know, arguably we could power a vast majority of not just the West, but the planet with a very small geographical, uh, you know, set of solar panels um, in terms of uh, diameter, distance, kilometers, a radius of putting it in a field somewhere. So... I mean, yeah, it's not going to be mentioned much, but, you know, there's there seems to be a way in which big oil is allowing the solar market to sort of insert itself in, in a certain way. But anyways, um, let's take a look at this right here. And this is the final thing I'll say about Afghanistan, by the way. Biden calls Afghanistan withdrawal, leaving only 10% of Americans and $85 billion of U.S. weapons behind, as well as 13 soldiers killed, an extraordinary success while blaming Trump and others at the same time. He blamed the deal that Trump made with the Taliban to, I think, release some American hostages, or if I'm not mistaken, something like this. Now, after he finished reading his speech from the teleprompter, he disappeared without answering any questions. Again, the White House is not lying. They're goddamn dodging and obfuscating. And I hate the fact that the English language or our society is so messed up that obfuscating is even a word, let alone it means something. Um, it's basically, obfuscating is just short of lying for those that don't know off the top of your heads. But um, he, 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 in his speech yesterday, he kept arguing with the American people that leaving Afghanistan was the right thing to do. Yeah, that's not the argument. It's the way you got out. You idiot, please forgive me, I normally don't say this, you guys know that, but I can't believe this is happening and no one's calling the White House out on it. I can't believe that. Every speech Biden makes is worded, okay, fine, they all are, but then he talks about if we stayed, it would have been bad, so we had to leave and it was a great success. A lot of people will agree, it's not about whether to stay or leave, it's the way that you left. Like, uh, for crying out loud, how do people not see through, how do, some, how do a lot of people still not see through this crap? You know, so anyways, the next thing is that building materials have been allowed into Gaza to help the buildings that uh, to help, I guess, rebuild or start afresh the buildings that Israel um, demolished and bombed back in uh, May, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, look, it just goes to show the secretly, in my humble opinion, uh, again, this may be a little conspiratorial, but maybe it might not be Israel controls the Gaza Strip, um, maybe unofficially from an intelligence perspective, but it's that control is still is still there. Also, there are other regions in the area with control too. I'm sure the CIA is in there and you name it, right? But the next thing is that the U.S. Supreme Court has allowed a six-week abortion ban um, in, uh, in Texas. It's the big debate again, right? It doesn't surprise me that this happened in Texas simply because of the South. Obviously, things are a little bit different with people's perspectives there, and I respect that. I understand that certain things are controversial. It's not for me to say which, you know, pro-abortion, anti-abortion, uh, pro-life, things like that, right? Uh, pro-choice. So it really is a very strong debate, and I'm not going to touch it because I myself, truthfully, I don't know where I stand on it either. So... The next thing is that two of the FDA's senior vaccine leaders are exiting from their position, uh, raising fresh questions about why the Biden administration and, um, and the way that it's sidelined, uh, uh, sorry, raising questions about the Biden administration and the way it's sidelined the FDA, excuse me. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it does raise questions. Again, mainstream media is not reporting it. This is not This is a fact. If you look it up, they have stepped down. This is legitimate. But again, the mainstream media is not reporting it. So therefore, it's not put into the official narrative. Therefore, it doesn't really mean much. The next thing is that certain immune cells from prior infections with common cold coronaviruses boost the immune, res immune response against COVID-19. A new study led by Sharit Medical University Berlin and the Max Planck Institute for Molecular Genetics concludes... Yeah, so, and then someone, this is an opinion more so from someone, but they raise a good point, so I'll read it. So we, they, this person says, so we killed the common cold by locking everything down and wearing masks, losing potential cross immunity and clearing the way for COVID, question mark. It's a fair point. Again, I'm not a scientist, so I, I don't want to sit here and debate and talk like, uh, act like I know what I'm talking about, but it's a fair point. Um... The next thing is that, uh, again, Israel, one of the most vaccinated countries in the world, registered close to 11,000 COVID cases on Monday, the health ministry reported today, marking a new record since the start of the pandemic. It now leads the world in the seven-day rolling average of new daily COVID cases per capita, overtaking Montenegro and Georgia, according to the Oxford University uh, data. <sighs> yeah. Um, I mean, again... the. I'm not going to give my opinion on this because it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. The next thing is that Facebook already uh, reduced the, uh, sorry, Facebook will adjust its algorithm again to reduce the visibility of political posts, according to a report in Axios, a move that will hurt the top performing political pages on the platform, most of which are conservative. Now, let's take a couple different angles and view and perspectives on this. Yes, first off, technically speaking, could Facebook, do they have the right to do this? They're a private company, they could do what they want. Yes, absolutely. Now, from more of a logical intellectual perspective or intelligence perspective, rather, we can clearly see what's happening here, right? Obviously, a big tech is catering more to the liberal democratic side of things. There's no shortage of evidence of that by any stretch of the metric. So it's not like I need to, you know, give examples. I think many of you know already ahead of time the, the cases that we've seen here, right? So um, especially over the past, I'd say, three to four years more more specifically if we were to uh, narrow it down. But again, I believe Breitbart is the Breitbart.com is the most circulated conservative uh, outlet on Facebook. So they're definitely going to take a hit if um, when this algorithm gets adjusted. Um, the next thing is that relations between Turkey and Armenia are rumored to be easing. I mean, look, that's good. That's good. Um, it's it's hard to say what what Erdogan, uh, Prime Minister of Turkey has in mind. He He's always I mean, as they all are up to something with different interests. But I see, in my humble opinion, I think he sees sort of a a tit for tat chess game that he could sort of start afresh and start anew on this metaphorical chessboard now that the US is out, out of Afghanistan. So you might, you know, you might be saying, Dave, what does that have to do with Armenia? Well, now, now that there's so much that Erdogan can sort of work with, if you will, he, there's a lot of different things he can put into place. It doesn't, countries don't necessarily need to be geographically close and things like that. But uh, not to say that's not the case with Armenia, but you know what I mean. Uh, the next thing is that organic, uh, there's an organic food revolution in Sri Lanka, uh, but the problem is, is that it's threatening its tea industry. I mean, look, the, this is the thing about society. You got to adapt when things change. Um, I mean, that might be an oversimplification because those words could be used against me over some arguments I've made in the past. So I want to be careful saying that uh, to be fair with myself too and consistent. But I, I you know, th this is the way I, I hate to ex dumb it down in this sense, but shit happens and we got to adapt in certain cases, especially economically. Um, the next thing is that Qatar warns that isolating the Taliban could lead to more instability. Um, I mean, look, ultimately at the end of the day, the, I, I, it's a mess. It's it's a mess. It's all. I don't know what to make of this. Honestly, let's let the intel. Let's let the CIA guy screw this up even more. Um, <laughs> the next thing is that Hong Kong activists and former legislators have been jailed over a 2019 protest. Um, yeah. I mean, again, the CCP, Xi Jinping, he's cracking down. Very simple. Um, which takes me to my next point, which is that China's education ministry has incorporated what's called a, quote, Xi Jinping thought, in, end quote, into their, again, indoctrinating with the, uh, the, the young people of, of China with a certain mindset, you name it. Now, again, I want to make this very clear. I got nothing against the people of China. The Chinese people are some of the greatest people you'll, you'll probably ever meet. I'm talking about the regime, the CCP. Look, they're doing what they want, how they want. 
um, the most we can do is speculate. I don't. I feel like there's not much to really debate about because we can sit here and debate all day about what China is going to do uh, economically, militarily, uh, from an intelligence perspective. It's all speculation at this point in terms of where they'll go next and all that, right? So that just opens up a whole world of possibilities that is pure speculation. It's not like we're narrowed down to a handful of um, outcomes. The next thing is that Tunisia issues an arrest warrant for their former presidential candidate, Nabil Karoui, who was arrested with his brother in Algeria. The arrest was for uh, illegally crossing the border, but many speculate uh, that this is also for something else too, because this is due to him giving himself sweeping presidential powers and suspending parliament earlier this year. The more, I don't want to, I hate to use this word, but the more conspiracy, skeptical, let's say, not conspiratorial, skeptical of those out there are, you know, wondering if this has anything to do with that, if there's some type of retaliation of sorts, but ultimately the public will never know. Uh, the next thing is that a U.S. agency has said that Tigrayan forces have looted their aid warehouse. Tigray. Yeah, I mean, you, you, th- this is what happens in, in, in countries all over the world, whether it's third world or developing, you know, it's very simple. It's a robbery. Um, these these Tigrayan forces or these rebels that looted this warehouse, it's pretty simple. They could They want food, they want weapons, whatever they can find, right? The next thing is that um, an NCI TV channel in the Ivory Coast says presenter um, on their station has been suspended amid nationwide backlash over a scene with the man using a mannequin to uh, simulate rape. Look, I'm going to be totally truthful with all of you. From from the perspective of us in, in, in Europe and the West, yes, that looks definitely messed up. Now, I'm not saying that this is the African culture in general, uh, but... There are certain cultural differences and, you know, like, for example, within Africa, from my understanding, the continent of Africa, uh, homosexuals are viewed still very, very negatively. And it's a very it's a cultural thing. Now, that's up for debate as to whether or not we as the West or Europe externally should get involved and sort of give our opinion on these things. But again, the point I'm trying to make here is that it's possible this presenter without defending him. I'm just trying to play both sides here assumed this was harmless simply because it doesn't seem like this whole woke culture has hit the African people, at least from my perspective, from what I see. I could be entirely wrong on this. Let me make that very clear. But again, this is pure speculation. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. The next thing is that Ukrainian President Zelensky will be heading to the White House shortly. I don't know exactly when, but again, he was involved in the whole, you know, not involved. He was Allegedly, Rudy Giuliani and Trump tried to blackmail him or, uh, and say, we're not going to send you your foreign aid unless you give us dirt on the on the Bidens and stuff like that. Look, I'll be honest, not defending Trump or Giuliani, just being consistent here. It's called opposition research and people have gotten dirtier than ever than, than that certainly before. It just it comes down to the way the media's phrased it. However, don't get me wrong, what, if assuming Trump and Giuliani did do this. That's not to say that's right, morally, ethically, but unfortunately, this is the reality of the world, right? The next thing is that an Afghan central bank board member has asked Biden and the IMF to release funds. Again, going back to the beginning episode when I talked about uh, economic collapse already, mass hunger on its way and things like that. Hey, I mean... Uh, let, let, let's see, let's see what the goal is here. Depend, it's very interesting because what Biden does is very different than what the CIA seems to do or, or what their intentions seem to be regarding Afghanistan. If you ask me, things are far too early to sort of unravel all of this and take a step back because new details are emerging every day. In my honest opinion, a full analysis of Afghanistan in, in like the, this particular uh, time of year and this withdrawal and things like that should be analyzed a year or two from now because that's when you can get independent reporters on the ground after things calm down uh, hopefully and they can sort of report things the mainstream media has been lying about you know stuff like that right which is why I don't want to you know I try not to make all crack and these last few cracking episodes all about Afghanistan but I mean holy hell right um the, the final thing is that Medellin, Colombia is really trying to reinvent itself economically and things seem to be doing all right, um, all things considered, considering it was, you know, the hub of uh, the uh, Pablo Escobar's Colombian cartel. Um, I've been hearing uh, things about the Colombia, uh, Colombia trying to do great things with their economy. That's always great to see. Um, and I, I really hope for the best. I have family that's been to Colombia. They say it's absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, um, other than that, folks, we will have for the members uh, another early release coming out later on, and we will also have a few other things coming out, too. So with that being said, hopefully all of you uh, enjoyed and we'll catch all of you very, very soon. Cheers.